Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at glow up advice, tips, tricks and habits that helped you look better. This is a post that I put out on the Coo Studio subreddit a week ago to get your feedback on what you guys think about this kind of advice and for me to provide some more feedback on what I think would be better advice or if this is actually effective or how this actually relates in terms of being usable and pragmatic actual advice. Now, I did say on the last week's episode that I would have somebody else join me for the episode this week. We did try that, um, but it does become a bit of a mess. So I'm going to skip that idea for now. And it will just be me on this week's episode. All right. So let's begin. First one is teaching men's fashion and Alpha M are both kind of memes at this point. I'm pretty sure it'd be easy to poke holes and many aspects. Okay. So in terms of teaching men's fashion, Alpha M, these are channels on the manosphere, the, the so-called men's self-improvement YouTube section. Uh, and, and the advice that they give is, it, it's not, it's, it's pretty rubbish advice. And I say this because at one point the advice used to be good. This was around 2014 when I was quite young myself, but now nowadays their advice is purely based on sponsorship segments if you don't believe me watch any of uh what's his name jose zuniga teaching men's fashion that's his channel every single youtube video has a sponsored ad segment and that youtube video that entire topic of the video is catered towards that sponsored segment so it really calls into question the authenticity the integrity of his advice and for that reason those are cesspools um i i don't think it's it's the worst type of advice you can get on youtube but it's such basic pointless advice you'd be better off spending your time on other platforms um and i commented here i think tiktok gives you more grounded advice than men influencers on youtube yeah i agree with this the the advice that you see on tiktok it's actually very relatable and that's because tiktok is at where men the manosphere channels were in 2014 so they're they're in their authenticity integrity relatability stage where they have to provide you good advice to get their channels to grow and then once it's grown they can take they can sell out however they like get any kind of sponsorship from um manscaped and um teach handley and god knows what else and then they can sell out so tiktok the advice on tiktok is good it's practical it's based around people of our demographics so looking at the youtube uh channel demographics it's like most most of the audience of my channel are around 20 to 30 somewhere in that range or maybe like 18 to 30 max uh and, and so the tiktok does give advice because most people on tiktok are around that age as well so the advice will be more relatable than the manosphere channels where uh say alpha m um what's his name aaron marino he's like 40 something now so his advice his advice may just be a bit outdated uh, and a good example of this was with um, earrings, his, his thoughts on earrings and uh, piercings on men. Personally, I think it's um, at one point it used to be cool, but now if everybody has it, it just defeats a purpose. It's not really a symbol of counterculture anymore. It's It has the opposite effect. So his, his ideas are a bit um, outdated, I think. Okay, next one. Hi, I'm someone who has been going through a pretty extensive glow up journey over the past year or so. I've noticed pretty drastic changes, so on and so forth. So the first thing she suggests is Accutane. I tried the whole skincare routine for a solid year, but it barely kept my acne in check. I had regular and constant breakouts. Or well, so at some point I ended up deciding to just see a dermatologist who put me on Accutane. It's been a few weeks now and my skin is almost completely clear with a little bit of post-inflammatory erythema, or sorry, erythema, well, I was pronounced that wrong, which is also fading. In my experience, it really isn't worth it to maintain a skincare routine if you have a lot of acne. It's a hassle and a lot more expensive in the long run. Accutane is the way to go. So I'll talk about this first piece of advice. Accutane is a silver bullet solution. It's the scorched earth of all acne solutions. And I don't know if this is just American culture because of your healthcare system but people are very hesitant to visit a dermatologist in australia um if you have any issue <laughs> just go see a specialist or a or a general practitioner and all of it's like free most all of it's free even even the accutane i took accutane myself and uh, i think the whole course for six months was like 60 dollars really cheap and 60 australian dollars which is even less but accutane uh is it, it we covered this in detail in uh this particular video on skincare but accutane i believe off the top of my head i think it's not allowed in america because there were some correlational studies that linked it not sorry not a correlational study but there was a very well-known politicized case well i think it was a politician's son who 
used Accutane, developed depression apparently, and committed suicide. For that reason, Accutane uh, got the boot and he got a very bad rap. But later meta studies have shown that there is no link between Accutane and depression. Also, Accutane being a very strong retinoid, if I believe, if I remember correctly from a study that I read a while ago, it's 10 times more powerful than your regular retinoid. So it's very strong. It completely eliminates oil production for a while. And some of the side effects that I personally got were very, very scaly hands. Sorry, not hands, but rather forearms. Um, and I would moisturize them every day as often as possible, but the skin would just peel off like I was a lizard or something, like literal reptilian forearms. It wasn't that bad. I mean, it cleared up my acne, and my acne was moderate at worst. But now I think this advice is actually very, very good because this is something I've been saying for a while. If you have very severe acne, skincare your skincare routine is gonna do jack okay it's going to do nothing absolutely nothing for your acne acne is a bacterial infection and while it is important to keep your skin clean you can't you don't fight tuberculosis with skincare routines you don't fight uh tetanus with a um <laughs> with the bath you don't you don't you get the point right so with bacterial infections you need the right equipment the right tools and those are antibiotics and oftentimes you, you need to fight the P. acne vulgaris bacteria, the bacteria causing acne with something like Accutane, which rather than being an antibiotic, it just eliminates the food source for the bacteria and kills it that way. If you do have acne, and this is moderate to severe acne, then I strongly recommend that you see a dermatologist. If your concern is the cost of visiting a dermatologist, then don't even worry about that. That is such a null factor compared to the the benefits, the self-esteem benefits that you get later down the line. Also, you save a lot on skincare products. Now, nowadays, I only have a sunscreen and a moisturizer. I haven't cleansed, use a skincare cleanser in like six years. I, I might use like an exfoliant once a week or something max. But yeah, you save a lot more on skincare. Your skin is a lot less likely to develop acne again because you've cleared the bacterial infection through and through. And also, if your concern is with depression or the side effects, then you should you should talk to your dermatologist about this. But the research has shown that the likelihood of these side effects is greatly overblown and it's highly politicized for no reason. The next piece of advice she provides us with is hair care. I have naturally very curly but very thin hair. This made it so that I was frizzy 90% of the time. I did some research, bought a few products and found one with keratin that worked really well for me. My hair looks thicker and coils really pretty at the bottom. With hair care, I, I don't have, I've never actually experienced this issue. Uh, what I did find worked personally for me was um, going on this, uh, so there's a subreddit called r slash no poo, which, <laughs> which is a funny name, but it just means that you don't use shampoo. And you might think that's going to make your hair smell really bad and, and gross, and you're, you're just going to feel icky. And it does, it does feel like that for the first couple of weeks, but then your body naturally stops, slows down the production of oils, and if you have longer hair like I do, then it helps to follow that routine. That And it is difficult at the beginning, but over time, you use a lot less shampoo or you instead of shampooing every single day or every other day, you shampoo maybe once every two weeks or once every week. And your hair won't exactly smell like roses, but it won't smell bad either. It'll just smell neutral. And I found that to work really well. It controlled the frizziness. So there's enough natural oils to uh, make it silky and smooth and quite glossy as well and nice looking but those are things that I found to be quite effective. I would also suggest using a dry shampoo, a leave-in shampoo. Uh, that's very effective because it can give your hair a lot of volume. Uh, I, I, this is more from a men, men's perspective that oftentimes men don't have as long hair so having a bit more volume can help with styling. You can work with new, newer styles that you haven't tried before so I would also recommend a dry shampoo like vo 5 one color matching my hair. Upon some research, I came to find that high contrast is really beneficial for me and my features. I dyed my existing light brown hair to black and haven't looked back. At first though, I dyed it with semi-permanent dye so I could try it out and liked it. I recommend everyone do that. So with color matching, this is also another important concept. If you have very pale skin, having high contrast uh, facial hair and more importantly head hair is very important for making your features stand out. Uh, more so for men, I, this is another point I'd like to point out. A lot of 
uh, Caucasian men that have very thin eyebrows. That's the most common thing we see in our aesthetic reports. Uh, oftentimes their eyebrows are very pale and not having dark features on a face can reduce your masculinity. Uh, in turn, it also makes you look less virile and a bit more sickly. So if you're a man, color matching, uh, getting darker features, darker facial hair is important. If you I guess if you're, I mean, I wouldn't recommend if you're pale blonde to just <laughs> dye everything, but you should try gradually trying darker and darker shades. And if your hair doesn't naturally become darker as you age, then this might be a better option. But for most blonde men and women, I've seen their hair naturally does become darker as they age. Um, and, and for that reason, it shouldn't really be a big problem. But if you like her, then I, I suppose you can color match your hair. I don't have a whole lot to say on this topic. The next point is makeup. Not only did I learn how to do makeup, but most importantly, I found a makeup style that really suits me. It became my go-to and it's natural and enhances my features. Not much to say there. I guess I would be more suited for a makeup channel. Uh, as for bangs, I used to have very heavy chopped bangs, which blocked out my features. I styled and parted them differently and grew them out so that they're really light now. This was one of the biggest changes for me. It's crucial to experiment, research and find styles that work for you. FaceApp is really helpful for that. You can try different hairstyles on yourself, which is interesting. Okay, now with bangs, what we've seen uh, in a lot of the clients is that it helps, bangs helps if you have a really big forehead. So uh, if your face is, if your forehead upper third is deviant from the ideal facial thirds, and this is a very rough guideline, then bangs are beneficial because it can make your facial balance, um, it can artificially change your facial balance by hiding more of your forehead. Uh, if you have a very short forehead, and this is the more common problem that we see, then bangs are absolutely a no-go and uh as as a style itself they uh it's a very neotenous style it gives the impression of very childlike features because most often times who has bangs are uh, young children have bowl cuts and bangs young girls have bangs so for that reason it can give the it can give an opposite impersonation if that's what you're trying to go for like say you're shorter and you also wear bangs and you wear very girlish clothing it can give you a very feminine but neotenous appeal whereas if you're if that's not what you want if you want to be treated more seriously especially in the workplace then having bangs having you know that kind of clothing being that kind of size um can can have the opposite effect so bangs are a very neotenous feature uh, not feature but hairstyle and uh, you need to understand how that makes you look Alright, so that's it for this part. I will be making this a recurring segment on the channel where we do an advice review and talk about the different types of glow-up advice that's out there on the internet. As always, if you want to leave your facial assessment and glow-up journey to the professionals, then you can order a Cube's aesthetics report over at the website. But other than that, I'll post part two and three very soon, and I'll catch you in the next one.